the Automatic Flight Control System, AFCS, part of the Q400's flight data processing system, reduces workload by automatically performing certain flight functions. The main functions of the AFCS are Flight Director Lateral and Vertical Guidance, Autopilot, Tactile Control Steering to let you manually adjust the control surfaces without disengaging the autopilot, your damper, and automatic pitch trim. There are two types of automatic pitch trim. The autopilot pitch trim function decreases mistrim forces on the control columns with the autopilot engaged, and the flap pitch trim decreases mistrim forces on the control columns with the autopilot not engaged, and the flaps in transit between 15 and 35 degrees. The AFCS refers to the combined operation of the dual flight guidance modules, the air data units, the attitude and heading reference system, AHARS, the VHF nav system, the FMS, and other related systems. The system takes inputs from mode and other selections on the Glare Shield Flight Guidance Control Panel, from the TCS and Autopilot Disconnect buttons on the control wheels, from the power levers, and weight on wheel signals from the PSEU. Output is mainly to the PFDs and MFDs. We'll concentrate on the heart and brains of the AFCS the dual flight guidance modules and the glare shield controller. We'll also look at the AFCS muscles, the autopilot actuators that operate the control surfaces by sending commands to the flight controls ECU and to the flat control unit. It's important to understand the connection between the yaw damper and the autopilot. On the flight guidance control panel, this push button engages the yaw damper and both white lights illuminate. But there's no indication on the flight mode enunciator part of the PFDs. Remember that the yaw damper can be engaged without the autopilot. Here, no flight director modes are selected, so there are no flight director lateral and vertical guidance bars, and the autopilot is not engaged. In this unusual situation, there are no lateral and vertical modes. Your damper disengagement is announced in a normal way. Steady for five seconds to get your attention, then it goes away. But if the your damper disengages due to a malfunction, it continues flashing until you reset it by pressing the autopilot reset button on a control wheel. Five seconds later, the light goes out. You cannot engage the yaw damper if roll attitude is more than 45 degrees. If you try, you'll see YD inhibit in white for five seconds. Autopilot indications are similar. Touch the AP switch light to engage the autopilot. Both white arrow lights come on. The yaw damper is automatically engaged. The autopilot cannot operate without the yaw damper. AP is announced on both PFDs and the basic lateral and vertical modes are displayed in reverse video for five seconds to get your attention, then in normal video. Notice that engaging the autopilot automatically selects the flight director. Like the yaw damper, at roll angles above 45 degrees, autopilot engagement is inhibited, and if engaged, the autopilot will disengage. At pitch angles, above plus or minus 20 degrees, autopilot engagement is also inhibited, and the autopilot will disengage.
the white arrow lights will extinguish automatically. When the autopilot disengages, lights on the glare shield will flash. And an oral warning will sound. To cancel the warning, you push the autopilot push button, or more commonly, press a control wheel reset button. But disengaging the autopilot does not disengage the yaw damper. Flight guidance modules 1 and 2 independently perform all processing for the flight director. But module 1 commands the autopilot and yaw damper actuators and Module 2 monitors the commands and the performance of the actuators, checking for mismatches. The HSI selector white arrow light points to the side that is inputting data to the flight guidance module in control. This is usually the flying pilot side. The data includes the VOR or FMS nav source selected with these knobs. Now let's talk about autopilot, lateral and vertical basic modes. We said that the flight guidance modules and flight director are the brains of the autoflight system and the autopilot servos are the muscles. Well on the Q400, when the muscles are activated, brain activity is conscious and visible. So when the autopilot is engaged, the flight director is also automatically selected. You see flight director guidance bars and you go into autopilot lateral basic and vertical basic modes. You cannot select these modes. The autopilot selects them automatically depending on conditions at the time of engagement or re-engagement after TCS is pushed. In basic modes, the autopilot will stabilize the aircraft by maintaining the existing heading or roll attitude and pitch attitude. Firstly, lateral basic modes. In roll hold, the autopilot will maintain the existing bank angle. This must be between 6 and 45 degrees. Remember that autopilot engagement is inhibited above 45 degrees bank angle, but below 6 degrees Wings level, not roll hold, becomes active. Wings level commands a zero degree bank angle to stabilize the aircraft. Wings level is known as a lateral submode. When bank angle is less than three degrees for ten seconds, the lateral basic submode transitions automatically from wings level to heading hold. In heading hold, the flight director maintains the current heading. There's only one vertical basic mode, pitch hold. The autopilot will hold the existing pitch, provided that it's below 20 degrees. You can adjust the pitch by moving the thumb wheel on the flight guidance controller. Next tactile or touch control steering. When pushed, the TCS push button disconnects the autopilot servos from the flight guidance system without disengaging the autopilot. TCS in white replaces the autopilot annunciation while TCS is held. The flight director bars are temporarily removed and any target speeds are temporarily replaced by dashes. Using TCS, you can manually override the autopilot and flight director to change attitude, altitude, and vertical speed. When you release the button, the autopilot continues at the new settings. If the new bank angle is more than 6 degrees, then you go to roll hold. TCS is also convenient for turning to a new heading. Let's look at flight director modes. Firstly, after the autopilot has been disengaged. You select lateral and vertical modes with these push buttons. Touch the heading push button. 
The natural heading select becomes the active mode in green. Firstly, in reverse video, to draw your attention to a mode change. The flight director bars appear, and the basic vertical pitch hold mode is engaged. Notice that the push buttons on the flight guidance controller do not light. Now touch the altitude push button. Altitude is the vertical flight director mode. This holds the existing aircraft altitude. Without the autopilot, you follow the command bars. But with the autopilot engaged, the autopilot will smoothly follow the command bars. To cancel a mode, you select another mode, or press the same push button again. Touch the Out push button. Altitude hold disappears, but because the autopilot is engaged, empty modes are not allowed. So the vertical mode becomes the basic pitch hold mode. Similarly, if no lateral mode was selected, the autopilot will force either wings level or roll hold depending on bank angle. We've seen that active modes are green, and you normally select them, but armed modes in white indicate that the flight director is waiting for the necessary conditions to be satisfied. Each change of mode goes initially into reverse video to get your attention. For example, the VOR is in a capture phase. Then, captured. Note that during TCS engagement you cannot change flight director modes, but automatic mode transitions from armed to captured still occur. Now some other aspects of the flight guidance computers. Firstly note that mismatch messages do not disconnect the autopilot and your damper. The HSI select push button selects which AHARS, ADU, nav source, and course and heading inputs are used by the flight director. It does not indicate which flight guidance module is in control. Remember that FGM number one normally controls and FGM number two normally checks. The HSI select push button indicates which pilot is commanding the flight guidance module in control. With the autopilot not engaged, touch the HSI select push button to indicate a change of flying pilot. The white arrow reverses. PFD number one now points to the commanding side, now the right hand side. When the autopilot is not engaged, active and armed modes are cancelled. Now let's show what happens if you press HSI select when the autopilot is engaged. Here we're back in a normal flying situation. Touch the HSI select push button. When the autopilot is engaged, not only are the existing modes cancelled, but the autopilot reverts to basic modes. When on an ILS approach and all conditions are normal, as you descend through 1,200 feet radio altitude, you go automatically into dual flight director mode. At the CAT-2 decision point of 1,100 feet, check that both HSI select lights illuminate and that you see the dual mode engagement message on both PFDs. In dual mode, both flight guidance modules become masters, process their own side data independently, and independently show flight director commands to their own side PFDs. If you disarm dual mode above 200 feet, you'll see dual off flashing for five seconds 
then steady, until a new lateral or vertical mode is selected. But if you disarm dual mode below 200 feet, or if there is any malfunction of related input or processing, you'll see the CAT2 fail message, again flashing, then steady, until you change lateral or vertical mode. Another function of the automatic flight control system is pitch trim. The two systems are completely automatic, but you should be aware of them. Autopilot pitch trim, with the autopilot engaged, and flap pitch trim, with the autopilot not engaged. With the autopilot engaged below 180 knots, large trim movements, called high-speed trimming, give sufficient maneuverability during flap extension and retraction, gear extension and retraction, and during acceleration and deceleration. But for air speeds above 180 knots, small trim movements, called low-speed trimming, will give adequate maneuverability. Note that pilot manual trimming has priority over the automatic system and will disengage the autopilot. If there's a problem, you may see autopilot pitch trim fail. According to checklist, disengage the autopilot. Set pitch trim as required, but do not re-engage the autopilot. The second pitch trim function, flap pitch trim, or flaps 15 to 35 degrees, with the autopilot not engaged, is also completely automatic, with no normal indications. But this message indicates an error in the system. Finally, pressing the go-around button will trigger the wings level sub-mode and command 10 degrees pitch attitude. The autopilot will disengage.